Hey, hey, it's your boy G Pam Chirac. Please don't forget to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Man, when it rains, it pours. It's not getting no better for Diddy. Diddy went to court for a second time and got denied bail. That's crazy. You got all the money and the riches and resources and can't get out of jail. That's the hurting part. Boy, this is going to be the roughest night Mr. P. Diddy ever had in his life. This is hurting him just like the pain he put on these people allegedly because it's still an open case. So here Mr. Jane Dale up on Art of Dialogue, and they were wondering, where did Diddy get all these diabolical schemes and how to weasel people on contract, how to trick people to allegedly using illegal substances. Where did he get these things from? Who made Diddy this evil? Why was he this evil? And Gene Dill, Diddy ex bodyguard, broke it down. He said this is what they did to Diddy allegedly. Diddy mentors allegedly taught him this game. He said when he met Diddy, Diddy was a nice college kid. He was nothing like the guy they said that he say he is on those reports. So enough of me talking. I'm going to let Mr. Gene Dill break it down. Diddy's ex-bodyguard. When Homeland Security ran up into his house, uh, people would tell you, people knew there was just a matter of time that they was going to indict him and bring him in uh, to see the judge, bro. It was just a matter of time. Uh, I just figured out with the grand jury and their different sessions and stuff like that, and then what uh, one of the uh, witnesses told me, I just figured it out that it was going to be around September that they were going to bring him in, bro. Um, this is, it's, people might not understand. It's difficult when you see a brother that has so much promise become right. an icon as far as in the music business and stuff that he did. Yeah, you're right. Uh, to turn around and um, just tear his whole life down. But it's all because of his mentors and the people that trained him and taught him the music business. You know, it's all about the people who trained and taught right. him the music business. Because Puff wasn't, um, uh, uh, he wasn't born a monster. You know what I'm saying? He was made into a monster, right. brother. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was made into a monster. From um, the stuff that happened to him, right. the things that he ha had to do, you understand? The things that he had to do to become who he is, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's like this, brother. You never like something so much that you can't do without. Right. And you never be willing to do anything to get where you want to be at. Right. You got to have principles. You got to have morals. You got to keep with exactly. yourself. Exactly. And in that music business, a lot of that stuff get thrown out the window. You understand? And that's what happened to him. He started doing the things to other people right. that was done to him. To keep it frank, he was doing the things to other people that was done to him. You heard what Gene Dill said? That's a common practice in the music industry that allegedly these things go on like that. You got to do anything and everything to get to the top. What would you do to have a $40 million contract? Man, we from the hood. Man, we got to get our people out this next situation. That's like they said, when they go, you go through one door, you got to go through another door. That's trick after trick, and they play on you like this. You heard what he said? They did Diddy, allegedly, the same way Diddy was doing people allegedly. That's what they teach in the music business, allegedly. This, you got to know better. And if you know better, you will do better. When he was in New York City, he was like that. Gecko from the Geico commercial. Then he turned and start uh, going when he lived in Cali and Miami. He turned into Godzilla. I would see him right. talk about how he using drugs. He was never like that. Right. He was smoking cigarettes, smoking weed, and everything. Oh my like God, that. He turned into something that you could consider a monster, bro. Then he started doing things to people. You understand that he learned. Right. That's a learned behavior, bro. Right. Just don't wake I'm up like that. I'm not saying that he may have 
have been doing a couple of things here and there with women, stuff like that in New York. But the things that they're talking about that he was doing, bringing in prostitutes to have sex with his girl and all that stuff like that, that was some crazy stuff to me, man. So I'm just looking at this whole thing, man. And um, you had asked me, and, and we don't have these conversations like most people do. We're going to go back and you're going to tell me what uh, uh, we're going to talk about this. You said, I'm going to ask you how you feel, bro. I don't want to. I don't want no man to ever go to jail and be leaving their kids behind, right? Be leaving their family behind, right? You understand? But some dudes belong in jail. You ain't based lying. on what they do and how they do it. We know that to be true. And it's just this situation, man. Um, when they get down to all the facts and all what happened, he may belong in jail, bro. And that's not my doing. That's not Cassie doing. Right. That's his doing. Right. That's learned behavior from the people that mentor him. Right. You gotta realize, man. You gotta. You, you, he learned from Andre Carell. He Whoa. learned from Russell Simmons. Ooh. He learned from Clyde Davis. Whoa. You understand? When those people are are are, are telling you that they were in heavy into the drugs. They was heavy into beating women and doing things at that age, at, at that crazy stage. That's going to make him think that he can get away with the same thing that they was getting away with back then. You understand? The things that he was saying, you know, the touchy-feely between two men. Wait a minute. Get your hand off me. Like that, man. All that's, he learned that from them dudes. When I told y'all the story, when me and my man went up to Russell Simmons, and he had a house, and he had a... Uh, uh, um, a man in bikini draws in his bedroom. In his bed. You heard what he said? He allegedly learned them things from Russell Simmons. Allegedly, Andre Harrell, that touchy feeling stuff. Oh man, my head is just, I'm just so discombobulated. I'm hearing these stories. This is crazy. He said they went to Russell Simmons' house. He had a man on with bikinis in the bed. You know, bikinis are bikinis. For men, that's what me and my friends be saying a joke when we see guys out there with them speedos on. McKinney's. Man, this is crazy. 